What's up guys? It's your boy Brad back with a, another video. Today I am going to be doing a kind of a half bike check, almost a full bike check minus the wheels today for uh, a customer in Lansing, Michigan. And go Wolverines, by the way, or if you're a Michigan State fan, it is the Spartans. But either way, it's Michigan. And this is going to my boy Joey. Joey is six foot two. I always like to talk about like who it's going to the size and whatnot um you know six foot two i'm guessing like 180 190 max um so what is he riding his bike shop owner told him well it didn't matter what size frame you got and i think he was gonna grab like a 20.25 at the time or something and i uh, saw he made left a message on one of the face group so asked if he had any questions it turned out that was one of the answers he got to the questions and uh there's a lot of things to think about when it comes to the geometry of a bike so i'm going to talk about that while i break down what he is getting from rpo bmx my shop here in bethlehem pa um obviously these are the van's tires he's going to be throwing on he really likes the the camo look and right now is a great time for that because one of the best camo seats just came out the uh animal love seat in camo with gold stitching um we're gonna start right there and when it comes to geometry and function of the bike the love seat is a pivotal seat so you can adjust it up and down it's a, not a super fat seat but it's got enough you know, squish to it that you can sit on it. If you're a little big, bit of a bigger guy, us older guys, you know, hemorrhoids and whatnot, we need something comfortable. So this is one of, this is one of animals, more comfortable seats. Um, and it's usually just black, which is also super cool with, uh, the stitching. Even if they just change the stitching color, animal stuff's always pretty fire. I love the Griffin logo. So moving down, we have a, this is another part of the geometry of the bike, a cold forged, uh, Eastern throttle seat post in sandblast gold. As you can see, we have a bit of a theme going. This is a 200 millimeter seat post right here. Some people, some seat posts now th they vary in size. Uh, some people like to slam their post, which was kind of like a, a thing of the past a little bit for like tail whips, I believe to keep your seat lower. Now seats are starting to get raised a little higher. I always thought, you know, it was, more comfortable the better i was always about a one grip and two finger length at the highest other than that i would do one grip but i'm not that tall i'm like five nine uh this person six two so that 200 millimeter should be enough for him if he wants to go taller he can i have that option but i think this is a good middle ground rather than the 135 so that's the first thing of uh, geometry for a taller rider that i think of is length of the seat post how high do you want to sit for it to be comfortable when it comes to the frame. So, all right, six foot two, taller seat post. Handlebar height. They had him order a set of nine inch bars, which I have no problem with. You can be six foot five and ride nine inch bars. It depends how you set them up. So when it comes to stack height, which I'm going to be doing a, a video on next, talking about the different stack heights and how you can adjust the different look front end of your bike, whether you want to use something like this, which doesn't even work with some forks because it's too big, the Churchill uh, Highline or High Rise stem, or if you want to use something like this, the Stranger Ballast um, stem, which is similar to the, to the uh, Cinema Aspect stem where it just kind of sits flat or you know, the, there's so many versions, the fly integrated version, which is a low stack. So I'm going to do that later. But so taller seat post, taller rider. I think that's fine. I don't think seat posts weigh that much unless you buy some of the old school uh, railed seat posts and you want to chop some off. But seat posts aren't going to drag you down um, if they're a little bit taller. And now they're coming back in style. So you're good. Up here, we have the Edwin De La Rosa grips. Um, these are, I think, I think they're not, they're not too long to wear. I usually have my roller with me, my trusty dusty, but I don't at the moment. I'm looking for it. 
but I wanted to make sure there was some room for brakes as he is going to have brakes mounted on this. He is getting back into riding. So always a good idea when you're getting back into riding after a hiatus, use brakes, get a cassette, not a free coaster. He uh, ordered Odyssey wheels. I never have anything bad to say about Odyssey products. I mean, not never, but you might as well save yourself some time if you're building a nice bike and get something good from, you know, a company like Odyssey instead of looking for areas to save money. So, you know, I applaud him on that. Um, so yeah, the Odyssey wheels are going to go on here with uh, some nice tires. I'm going to send them some free tubes with uh, the build. I always send uh, some free goodies for every $200 spent and back to the top. So we have the green Edwin grips to match the theme of the camo gold and raw look these are the edwin de la rosa grips this these are the federal drop v2 bars so these are a four piece bar with a 9.5 inch rise so 9.5 inches isn't like the tallest now they have tens even s m has 11 inch rise but i think since he's coming back to riding and is probably used to the era of very small bars and, and a lower, um, I'm just going to call it a lower handlebar height. These 9.5s are actually going to probably feel pretty good with uh, this setup. I think 9 inches would be too small. The uh, Even though it ha we have a taller head tube at 6 foot 2, I, I mean, I like to ride 9.5 bars if they're set low or on a front load. but with a front load that he was going to get also nine inch. I just think it's too low. So these are nice, big 29 and a half inch wide bars, which is like a really good length bar. You know, you can always trim them down if you want. They have a really cool embossing right here. The federal embossing. I have a pair of these in Chrome left that in rid of and pretty inexpensively. So federal drop V two bars, light four piece bar, very sturdy. Joe Jarvis rides them or used to, unless he's working on his own now. Moving down to the animal jump off stem. This is the gold version that they came out with last year. They, I don't know if they have any available right now for sale. I'm sure the scalpers are trying to jack up the price on the gold, but uh, have faith in animal. Animal always comes through with, uh, with, with something good for us. So just when you thought, you know, you weren't going to get anything cool. Bam. You know, got camo seats. We got the jump offs back, got some pop offs. It's and, and animals working with in the USA. So maybe the prices are a little higher, but they parts are, I'll tell you what, worth it. And they mostly have like time guarantees on them. So got to get animal out of the underground. You know what I mean? BMX needs to start, start growing again uh, and stop being looked at as just a little hobby for us guys let's get this let's get this thing fired back up okay now moving down we have i put a kink headset with this i really like the style of this kink headset i'm not exactly sure what it is but i can use a taller rise with um the front load stem so i went with the taller rise because kind of cancels it out i still wanted to see all the graphics on the taller head tube it's about a five inch head tube hundred and 10 millimeters, I believe. Top tube here is a 20.8. This top tube comes in a lot of different sizes. This one was on the longer side, so I believe it was actually a 20.9. And I know you're saying, ah, oh, he's 6'2, why didn't you know you go higher? Well, I had this in a 20.8. It's reasonably priced at the moment. And I was able to set it up and talk to him about the geometry, what he likes, what he used to ride, which was actually set up smaller. So um, this, I think, will be perfect. The other option he has, which he has another stem, is as these stems, front load stems by Animal, are all 48 millimeter reach, you can get a larger, longer reach stem, which will give more distance from the seat to the bars. Or you can get a top load stem, which will increase the height of the bars and be a little easier on your back as you're riding. So you can play around with that stuff. You know what I mean? Don't hesitate to ask your bike shop guys a bunch of questions like, why is stack height so important? Because it's not really where the bars sit when you're riding. Doesn't matter if they're 9.5s, if they're 9 inch. They can all sit at the same waist height if you mess with 
your stack height. You cut your uh, fork tube down or something to lower it a little bit. You use a headset like this with the cut down steer tube. You know, and then, you know, 9.5 bars, all of a sudden, they're no longer waist tight or they just are waist tight instead of reaching all the way up. So that's how I like to measure the height of my bars. Are they, do I like them at waist tight? Do I like them higher than waist tight? And how reactive are they at that height? So you might want to try that next time you're buying bars or something. See where your current bars sit waist high, however high. And then when you go to get those new bars and you set them on, if you're super comfortable with the way your bars are, make sure they're at that same height. If you were looking for a taller bar and you got a taller bar, but it's still sitting at the same waist height, it's not going to make any difference in the bar. So um, something to think about. Moving down, kink headset, kink forks. These are 28 millimeter offset kink CST forks. They are one of Kink's first and best cast forks. They're a lighter fork, which I really like, and a very strong fork for being as light as they are. 28 millimeter offset. As we know, Trails is more 32, 33 millimeter offset. Uh, Street is 25 usually and under, and 28 is just sweet spot right in the middle. Brock Rayford forks are 28. I just saw Brett Silva rides 28. Guys that do like a lot of like crossover stuff, 28 is like the perfect size for them. Uh, they can ride street, they can ride trails, they can ride transition. So when with the 28 and lightweight, moving on, trying to speed this up for you guys. This frame has an invest cast seat post clamp. It is not an invest invested cast. I want to say like the seat post clamp is not invest casted into it. This is seat post clamp is an invest cast clamp, meaning it comes off, but the clamp was forged for this specific frame and is set up to look good with this frame, which I personally love. I, I like the look of being able to change a little bit of the color for the seat post clamp. And also when I've said this many times, if you break an integrated seat post clamp on a bike that you can't replace, and I know a lot of people don't break them, and it's probably very hard to break one. But if you do break that, you need to be a welder and a good one to try to fix that. Otherwise, it's done. That's probably one of the most sensitive areas, but they're super strong right now. That's one area I do think BMX can, say, uh, improve upon. I'm tired of scratching the back of my seat post, guys. Come on, man. There's got to be something you can come up with that keeps your seat post nice and tight, slides it in and out easily. We're not talking about it because if you get one of those snap on clamps or whatever, you know they don't tighten well enough on every frame. So maybe, I don't know, come out with like a super nice, uh, easy on, easy off type of uh, clamp. A lot of riders are up in their seat post, bringing it down, but I've tried when I use the clamps that you can adjust, they just don't clamp tight enough on certain ones, but this thing breaks, you get a new one. Okay. And you can replace the bolts too, if they strip, because that, that tends to happen. All right. Now area from here to here, this is your seat tube area. Your standover is from the center of this top tube to the center of your bottom bracket. This has a 9.3 inch standover, which is pretty is a taller standover. So that's also going to help for a taller rider. Most of the standards when standard uh, standovers when he rode were like 8.7, 8, you know, maybe like 8.8 .8 at the tallest. Standovers used to be a lot. Used to They started getting smaller and smaller. I don't know if you remember guys used to say, you know, bikes were starting to look like scooters. What did they mean by that? Meant they had all this here, but they had like a six inch standover here that the top tube was connected to so the thing looked basically like almost like a scooter and then with the slam seat it was getting bad um but some people like that and it is bmx freestyle so hey if you like it do it man don't worry about what anyone else is saying about it moving on the back end we have a 13.25 slammed chain stay so 13 inches i would say is a very comfortable chain stay this one is 13.25 slammed, which means it's going to add a lot of stability to it. Think about that Cadillac. 
that thing is stretched out, man. So as they stretch this out, it adds more stability to it. It's a little easier to, it's not as easy to pull the front tire up, but it's a lot easy. It's a lot easier to fall on your head with a shorter chain stay. You go to pop that bike up with my cross cut. And before you know it, that back tire is already flying into the air. So this longer chain stay, which is going to be doing mostly park and, or, you know, just basic cruising, right, cruising around, um, I think is a great chain stay is a great length chain stay. It'll probably end up being about 13.5, super comfortable at the skate park. And this is Mickey Flex signature Zween frame. So, you know, this thing's beefy as ever in the dropout areas. It has the United symbol etched into each of these dropouts. And we also have some nice sized chain tensioners that are going in here. I don't like to thread the chain tensioners in on someone. They come separate uh, in the box. So I'll let him decide on chain tensioners. I believe I've told you guys my opinions on chain tensioners, but with a dropout as long as this and with this much adjustment, you just may may like um, may like to put the chain tensioners in. Uh, I don't think he's going to be doing a whole lot of heavy grinding, and they're there. They do come in the box, but moving on, we have. I'm going to get to the drivetrain now. This is a 22 millimeter bottom bracket. It does have the cups, and. I have a Unite uh, Supreme. I'm going to flip the bike. Oops. I'm going to flip the bike around now. This is a Supreme United Supreme bottom bracket. So here's how I'm going to do this. Sorry, man. All up in the edit, but so you already said, anyway, this is a Verde region sprocket sandblast gold. Verde is also a good company. Um, it's a very just simple classic sprocket. Uh, great price, $35, and it's 25 tooth. Uh, the micro gearing, I just think, will be great, especially with the 175 millimeter crank arms. He has more space with the taller standover and for pedaling and can move the seat up. If you know your knees are getting a little too cramped and close to you, but I think the 175s will be perfect for park riding and cruising around, as well as the 25 9 gearing, which is what the gear ratio is, and it is going to be right hand drive. What I did not add yet is the uh, my coder chain with uh, this much space in the back and here in the dropouts. I'm sorry. You can use a full link chain, the Micoder 710 chain. Those are just the different levels of aluminum used for the chain. 710, 510, 410. The lower, the lower the number, the lower the grade of aluminum. Lower grade, not quite as strong, maybe lighter. So you're got your, you know, pluses and your minuses with each of these. The material of this frame is Sanko Japanese chromoly. It is not made in Taiwan and it does come in from uh, Japan, then goes to East Sussex, England. And then from England, it gets shipped to our my distributor in uh, California. And from there, it makes its way slowly over to me because Mickey is nowhere to be found in America. He, right now, he's usually over in Barcelona. So as I'm having a look, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the pranks, the United Supreme V3 cranks, 22 millimeter bottom bracket, a very nice thick uh, volcano bolt here, and a volcano washer does go inside of it, which, I mean, these cranks, when I was putting them on, looked so good. They're a beautiful gloss black and they have united with a little period and lowercase letters outlined and etched in black there. So as you pedal and your, and your ankle rubs, the united will, will remain. And on the inside, as we can see, we have the little united hot stamp with the laser print and the 175R clear as day. 
and yep it even says supreme on it so yeah these are just like really nice cranks really really nice 48 spline cranks as well as this bottom bracket the united supreme bottom bracket has some real a really cool cutout in there and it does say supreme it doesn't have too much detailing on it like the odyssey odyssey i love you odyssey and i love jim bauer who's a designer at odyssey but I mean, there were some really cool stuff that they used to come out with. And right now, big white letters, Odyssey on the wheels just doesn't do it for me. Big white Odyssey letters on crank arms doesn't do it for me. I kind of prefer something like this, a little cleaner look with a nice, um, you know, just a quick little design. Look, boom, you want this frame to look simple? It's got one, two, three stickers on it. Oh, you want to take it off? Simple. One of the classic, best classic and nicest colors in BMX, you will see the most stuff is raw. This one is not raw. This is actually a black chrome. So I'm going to do a quick preview for this video and I'll do like an up close of it. So, so as to prevent at the end of each of my videos showing you all of this, you don't have to wait for it. So 28 millimeter offset forks. I wanted to go over the full specs of this frame in case anyone was interested in getting one. As I said, it is Japanese Sanko Chromali. What does that mean? It just means that it's a, I, I think Sanko Chromali is a little bit lighter than uh, the Taiwanese Chromali. And I think the American Chromali is a little lighter than the Japanese, but hey, it could all i don't even really know those are just all my opinions my thoughts could be just bike bro chat oh we also have brake mounts on this if like i told you he's going to be running brakes so great frame to run brakes with top bottom tube gussets lifetime warranty on the stem lifetime warranty on the four piece federal bars not sure i think there's a few more lifetime warranties like the cranks but i'm not sure i don't ever see anyone breaking those cranks um so you also have the tapered uh tubing all the way to here to the invest cast rear dropouts which looks really amazing um removable brake mounts invest cast dropouts built-in chain tensioners um this head tube is 75.3 degrees which is a little steeper than the average which is 75 why 0.3 degrees i'm not sure does it make a big difference i don't know i Sure, like as I said, if I was talking with geometry, it all depends. If you have really steep forks, yeah, it's going to make a difference if you don't. All the geometry on a bike plays together. So, so if you were to have 13 millimeter offset forks, right, really steep forks, and you had, say, a 54 millimeter reach stem, that would almost be counterproductive because the long stem is adding balance whilst the steep forks are adding responsiveness so they're kind of canceling each other out you almost if you see what i'm saying on this frame you can almost see it just it just looks you know so nice everything seems to flow very well and if it didn't if this if the bars were like you know up and the forks were stepped back and that's how you preferred it that's fine You've seen Dan Krupp ride. He likes his bars forward. Cool. But don't tell me he has to ride his bars that forward all the time. If he gets a much steeper fork, he won't have to push his bars as far forward. Bottom line. Bottom line. Anyway, can't argue with physics. Did I miss anything else? 13.25, 11.6 inch bottom bracket height. If someone wants to write into me, 11.6 11 inch bottom bracket height and a 71 degree uh, um, standover seat tube, 71 degrees is average. And 11.6 inch bottom bracket height is right around is 11.6, 11.7. They don't get much higher than like 11.9, I don't think, till you start getting really twitchy with the bike, the higher it goes. Um, I watched a Colin Baranyak video where his newest version of the of his Fiend bike, he actually dropped the bottom bracket height and he said, someone said, oh, you're not going to be able to do crooked grinds. And he was like, I can absolutely do crooked grinds. It does not touch. You don't have an issue with that. You crooked, switch crooked grinds, whatever. But the stuff that, that, that will affect that is a super low bottom bracket height, not 11.6. And 
your sprocket, how many teeth you have on your sprocket. If you have, if you have 28 teeth, you're going to need a taller uh, bottom bracket height like Jordan Godwin, who rides the Doomsayer, which is by We The People, super responsive. Uh, a taller bottom bracket height, I'm not going to say it's much taller, it might only be like four millimeters taller, but when you look at everything all in, in the, and how technical all the tricks are, that four millimeters does make a difference. So I'm going to say shout out to Joey. Hope you like this build, man. It's going to Michigan right now. Giveaway wise, we are at number, we have two people for the cult, two out of six cult giveaway. So it, the sixth person to spend $75 or more gets a cult free cult tool bag and we're at number toolkit we're at number two and anyone that orders any uh stranger primo stuff over 50 bucks or frames or whatnot i got a process magazine for you which kind of got some sweet photos by uh some of the stranger guys and it's an older one it's i don't i don't know how many they did but I don't know. These pictures are sweet, you know. All right. And final question of the day. What is Zooine? You can look it up and Mickey Fleck will try to explain it to you in broken English. But in my opinion, you should. I think Zooine is like their Spanish, not Latino, the Spanish word for what we would call ism in the Bay Area. And if you want, look up the word ism on YouTube, find out what the ism is. Uh, you might find a pimp that will drop the uh, some information on you about what the ism is. But I think the zoin and like ism are kind of like same thing. I'm going to leave that up to you guys to look up. Hope you guys like this build, like this video. And uh, I'm out, man. I'm done. It's uh, Sunday and it's hot. I'm going to go get some riding in. Peace. Saturday, not Sunday. I'm wrong. <laughs>